uh, we're Resin. Uh, we occupy all parts of the globe, uh, Asia Pacific, uh, Europe, where we're from, uh, and America as well. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm Marcus. And I'm Simon. It's alright. Um, I can it. Oh, you go. Uh, it's, it's extremely fun. I think um, we've all known each other for quite a long time, and so we've become very good friends. So, um, resin never feels like going to work. Um, it's just a day hanging out with friends, coming up with uh, fun ideas, and then executing them. We're all lifers. Yeah. We've been we've been at resin for a very long time. Collectively, longer than the company has That's been cool. around, which is an interesting uh, note. Um, and all of us have worked across multiple offices. So all three of us worked in New Zealand. Then we moved to Amsterdam. Um, so we've kind of seen the company grow over the space of you know five, six, seven years. Um, so being a part of that journey has been great for all three of us. I guess we're not necessarily looking for specific talents. I mean, obviously, people have to have a certain level. We're more looking for people with like a very strong, um, how do you say, interest into what we do, a very strong passion. I think, yeah, that defines us quite well. It's really important for us, the passion people get. Yeah, I think the people that have become kind of the core of Resin and, and maybe who have worked with us for a long time uh, have, were trained by someone, a senior yeah. person at Resin. So, um, you know, we take on juniors, we train them over the space of a few years, um, and we find very quickly they get to quite a, a senior level. Exactly. Um, it's also so, worth, yeah. worth noting as well that a lot of the very senior team did not start with uh, traditional uh, background, you know, digital yeah. backgrounds at all. They come from a wide range of things, uh, music, video production, film. Chris uh, used to write comedy. Yeah, I wrote comedy back in the day, yeah. Um, so it's, it, it is as Simon said Simon about... Simon was a hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> So as Simon said, though, it is about uh, passion and, and, and drive. Yeah. Um, the talent. drive is really, really important yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very funny question. Tricky one. Yeah. Tricky one. Um, I think, as I mentioned before, being all being friends, it's a very natural environment to be creative, I find. Mm. We just kind of sit in a room, lock the door, and then we kind of just throw around ideas. Um, and we're just having fun, and I think being in the presence of, of mates, creativity is not hard to yeah. generate. Yeah. We don't necessarily think about it, like it kind of happen in some ways, like mm. we don't try to be creative. Try to answer a brief and answer what a client needs is, I guess. But I think everyone also brings their, their specific part to that, that picture as well. So thinking animation, the design, the symbiosis of how all those things work together. And a bit of uh, humour. A little bit of humour, <laughs> yeah. of course. Yeah. I think we're making sites we'd love to use. You yeah. know? And, and if that's happening, then that's inherently great, yeah. it would be creative, let's say, mm. in our minds. Yeah. Marcus? Just, just, <laughs> I mean, for personally, I ate a shirt once. Um, it was, it was, uh, I just I was, I felt like it was a performance art piece. I got through a sleeve and the buttons, because the buttons are easy, just basically swallow them like pills. Um, uh, for me, that's, that's kind of my own little personal goal. I want to try and one day maybe finish a whole shirt off. Um, I guess. Rated? Yeah, it's all. rated as it probably about six years yeah. ago. Um, <laughs> it's old. A pro it's pretty old, yeah, a project yeah. we did for a magazine. Uh, a weird kind of computer AI that talks you through a website. Um, try to control your mind. I think the weird projects is kind of was the core of our brand, and we still want to try and keep more of those alive. Um, yeah. But more and more, they have to become personal projects for Resin. Um, yeah. Back in the day, maybe in, in Flash days, you could get those sort of the crazy jobs with client work. Um, so it's just trying to find the right space for them now. We, we do find that we do have some time as well for some interesting uh, personal projects within Resin, culture projects, I guess you yeah. call them. Yeah. Uh, watch this space. I'm looking at all three cameras. Uh, something is on the way we're pretty excited about. So, you know, we're always thinking about stuff that we can uh, build and create that's also going to inform the, the more commercial projects that we do as well. Yeah. 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 And I guess we've always been perceived a bit as like a lot of humor, a lot of like. Yeah. I don't know, on the extreme spectrum of digital, where I don't really think we take it that way. It's more we're having fun with what we can do, and mm. if you happen to be perceived as weird, well, I don't necessarily think it is. But.
Marcus. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of a think about this. I think uh, I'd like. I think websites uh, and interactive is going to get more reactive to the user, and I think we're starting to see this a little bit with interfaces. So going beyond the traditional kind of hover state and click buttons, where buttons, you know, move to meet your mouse and uh, an interface mm. that, that, that reacts to where you are in, in a position space on the website. Um, but taking that further and further, I think we can bring in a sense of kind of AI in a very simple form to a website. Um, it almost knows what you're going to do next. Um, and maybe moving into the VR space, that'll be the best kind of moment for those interfaces to, you know, Know, know where you're looking and provide interfaces at, at um, those kind of moments. I think beyond that, even yeah. in a very more, much more general, much more general, much more general uh, way, uh, sensory kind of uh, input, I think is going to be really interesting. Like uh, smell. No one's yeah. ever smelt a website before. No. I hope it will happen soon because I think this is, no, I'm, I'm serious. I think this is a really interesting place. You can gain a lot of nostalgia from sense of smell. It's one mm. of those uh, senses that's kind of not been a little bit neglected. Mm. The same with touch as well. Yeah. Haptic haptic uh, you know, uh, gloves and, and whatnot. Um, so I think the encompassing thing with, uh, with all senses as well from, from a VR perspective, not just sight and sound. Uh, this is the same answer that I gave three years ago, Google. It's, uh, Google does everything. Yeah. You, you just write in what you want to know <laughs> and it tells you. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a real godsend, isn't it? Pretty much, it's yeah. helped us through a few sort of rocky, rocky moments. Wow, down the window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we, again, going back to this kind of sensory kind of thing, and also with uh, narrative, which has always part, played a big part in what Resin does. Uh, we get inspiration from everywhere, and particularly, I think it's an interesting way when you try to port that analog reality into something digital, uh, which is something that we always try to do yeah. in some kind of a way. Um, so inspiration comes from anywhere. It's it's not necessarily um, just from uh, from looking at other people's work, although that does inspire and that does. Uh, uh, you know, help inform us in some of the decisions that we make. Uh, we, as Marcus said as well, from the from our own conversations, from our talk, from mm. a film that we saw, from a play that yeah. we saw, from a dance that we saw. I mean, it comes yeah. from all of those kind of sources. That's a really vague answer. Sorry, guys, but you know. I think I, I suppose a lot of our inspiration comes from like our pitch phase because we pitch pitch for all our work. So for the majority of our work, we pitch for it, um, and so we're competing against other agencies and. Um, Three of us often are sitting in a room trying to break down the, the brief and find what inspires us to, to react to that brief um, and get us all excited. Um, and in many times, it's coming up with some creative metaphor that wraps the experience in a way that makes sense, and that can be for any brand. Um, uh, and so I think the inspiration comes from totally understanding the user, the client, um, and then what's the one thing that uh, will wrap it in a way that makes sense. That's good. I, I've it's actually really good. forgot I what the question was. On it. I forgot what the question was <laughs> even, so that's, that's epic. It's oh. a good question, and this is one of my favourites. I think uh, oh, the, the big thing from us is, is that we know that awards is, is composed of all our peers and the people whose decision uh, and whose thought and whose critique has a big impact on us. And so knowing that those people like our stuff makes us no, feel good great and it feels yeah. really good and it's a it's a really it's very motivating yeah. it's yeah. very inspiring for, for all the of team, us and it keeps for us. everyone trying to better each other yeah. You know? yeah. um, I think without sites like this yeah we need that motivation to keep you see another company does something amazing and inspires you and yeah. exactly. kind of one-ups the whole industry I think yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we're here the three of us and there's a fourth one there if you spin your camera just over there with that guy there <laughs> uh, there's a <laughs> um, we, we represent a very small fraction of the team and we're here representing all of those guys because they're the guys who really put this whole thing together and make it awesome and make it amazing yeah. and uh, they uh, every morning are on awards looking through the, the latest stuff and, and it, we, we find it very inspiring for us for sure done alright cool so awesome.